Hi there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emmett, I think I'm real, and you're watching another installment of Internet Explorer. And you're watching another installment of Internet Explorer. I should do it like that. Today's episode is part two of two of the entire story of Andy Worski's life. I'm actually leaving a lot of stuff out, so I'm sorry about doing that, but I had to truncate things. It was just getting too long, but today you're going to get to enjoy watching a man spiral into insanity, destroy his own career, one terrible decision at a time. And you're going to get to watch an entire other genre of YouTube, right? Last time it was the anti-SJW genre, this time it's the internet blood sports genre, completely dissolve all at the hands of Andy Worski. And things end really, really badly. At the end of the day, this is a tragedy, so buckle up, get ready, and enjoy part two of two of Internet Explorer, Andy Worski. On March 15th, 2018, Andy Worski and Baked Alaska, two of the most noteworthy figures in the IBS community, met up with an IRL streamer by the name of Asian Andy for a stream titled IRL Blood Sports. IRL means in real life for the uninitiated. For the five hours that followed, Asian Andy, Andy Worski, and Baked Alaska would wander through Los Angeles provoking the locals for content. A text-to-speech feature that viewers could donate money to would read aloud absolutely anything the donor would write, which was then broadcast on a double speaker that Asian Andy wore on his person. During a stroll through UCLA, the three YouTubers walked among a crowd of students and had the following interactions. Uh, I mean, why do we make more money? So, yeah. It makes no sense. Sexism is 77 cents to a dollar? I mean, that's, it sucks. We hold hands, we make you know, love, we steal women. So you guys work hard, huh? Next. So, yeah, yeah. I believe in women. I believe in the power of women. Honestly, I'm just a walking, talking, coming machine. If I'm being, I'm only needed for semen. Then girls can do the rest. If I'm being yeah. honest, that's awesome. We must. What are those two brown bitches doing outside of the kitchen? <laughs> I'm sorry. They heard that. What the fuck? I, I don't know. You're killing on the speaker. You have about two more minutes left. Show some respect for the 13 Jews that died in the Holocaust. Cool if I interview you. I don't know. You can be the face of sexism or anti-sexism. Alright, have a good day. I'm sorry. Enjoy your free speaker, bro. Alright, have a good day. Follow me, Asian Annie, on YouTube, man. You are supposed to be getting this nigger a grill, not HIV. He already has an 80%. Alright, sorry, the speaker's gonna disconnect you. Get to 89. There's white chicks all over the- there's one right there. Okay, let's go talk to them. As a fellow female hey. Jew POC, I am sorry hey. for my privilege. Hey, how's it going? I must pay I eternal I debt to the superior oh, white okay. male. They would soon be detained by police for their presence on the campus after blaring extremely racist music over their loudspeaker. And the NAACP You wanna know, hold on to that for me? Sure like to Thanks, sir. Hold up, nigger hating me. Oh, you're a champ! Hold it up high, brother. Blue and niggers are black. You know that's true. But they don't mind. Oh, what the heck? Oh, turn, turn, turn it down, turn it down. Oh, come on. Can you put it back in my backpack? There's two cops right there, dude. We're gonna get fucked. Oh, really? Yeah, right there. Are you stupid? Right there to the left. Oh, you can't have a speaker? What were you guys talking to the girls about? Uh, which um, girls? We're talking about sexism at one point. Yeah, sexism. Yeah, yeah sexism? Yeah, because yeah. they were talking about that. So we're yeah, like, so we just oh, joined yeah, the conversation. So stop sexism. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were being respectful. That same day, the three streamers would miraculously run into Blair White, who you'll remember was a frequent guest on Andy Worski's channel prior to the events surrounding Kilroy and Crown T. Their interaction on the Hollywood strip was clearly strained, as you'll see here. Hey, Andy! What's hey, up? guys! No, yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, that's awesome. I know you. What's up? Who is this? I'm Asian Andy. I'm a, I'm a big fan of your work. Okay, the, the trap, I'm, I'm all up for that trap. Oh. Yeah, I'm all I'm all about that trap shit. Yeah, yeah. Trap no shit. I'm all I'm all about that trap shit. I, I just came I I just vacationed in Thailand. Just under three weeks following their run-in together, Blair White and Andy Worski would have a public falling out sparked by Andy discovering that Blair White unfollowed him on Twitter. He calls her human garbage, to which Blair responds, keep your internet gutter channel killing drama away from me. Blair appeared on Andy's channel on several occasions throughout 2016 and 2017. They were likely friends or at least 
close acquaintances, as Andy explains in this tweet responding to his public apology to Blair. Yet another friendship destroyed and it would not be the last. Decency aside, the IRL Bloodsport stream was assuredly a financial success for Asian Andy, but this was likely an even bigger success for Baked Alaska, who had faded into relative obscurity after the momentum of the general election had finally waned and Milo's tour came to an end. Unfortunately, the good graces of the internet blood sports community were fickle, as Baked Alaska was soon to discover, because it would be his head to be next on the chopping block. As succinctly as I can possibly summarize the situation, Baked Alaska hosted a stream in which he demanded that his increasingly alt-right audience curb their toxicity in his chat, most likely to get into the good graces of this girl, Erin, who is entirely unimportant to the story. The original stream has been removed by Baked Alaska, but here are Andy Worski and JF Gariepi summarizing the community's turn against him. What happened was, he pulls out last night one of the worst thing I was yelling, Baked! Don't do it! Don't! He said, stop with the toxicity in the chat. As in, okay. let's uh, let's all be nice here. We're supposed to be kind. Dude, it's banned. Baked is not going to be able emotionally to cope with the demand of an alt-right audience. And he's, gonna, he's going to crack. I didn't know that it would blow as spectacularly as this. And as the community had with so many others, they set their sights on Baked Alaska, dragging his public image through the mud and ravenously drawing as much blood as possible until yet again, he was forced to fade into obscurity. The next victim would be closer to home for Andy Worski. Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, just one minute ago, I have uh, quit Warski Live. During a regularly scheduled debate, Andy Warski spoke while JF was making a point against his opponent, prompting Gariepi to respond to his co-host like this. Uh, uh, Andy, this is important. I, I'm not in the term no IQ I'm interventions. Not. Andy, so you shut the fuck up for one minute. Okay, fine, fuck man. So All right. This is a classical argument of the form of okay. Stefan Moliner which is you engage in discussion, therefore you accept all the rules of discussion. I didn't. I don't. I'm just a human being. I emit noise. There are other beings. They interpret this noise based on their own rules. Andy, you can go ahead. Why have to be a dick like that? I was going to ask one question that was part of this. I was kidding, Andy. The original stream is no longer available to watch, but this particular instance alone is not the reason for the fallout that would follow. It was, however, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Andy would confess, as we'll see, that he felt like a stranger on his own show during his run with Gariepi as his co-host. It was clear that all was not well on Andy Worski's channel. For the better part of a year, Andy had Chris beside him to help him operate his business. It was a cooperative relationship, plainly evident by the fact that they would almost never appear on screen without each other. For JF, his relationship to Andy was purely a means to an end, a platform upon which he could express his fringe political opinions and bolster his alt-right audience. Documents from Gariepi's family court case say this about the enigmatic neuroscientist. His struggles with understanding others results in a lack of empathy regarding others and that he finds it near impossible to take the perspective of another. Andy aired his grievances to Gariepi on a live stream, expressing the following issues to his co-host. It was just a spiral of just making me look like fucking like fucking trash and you've done this before um and it's just like i got, got people attacking me on all sides and it's just like now i have to be worried about the person that i host a show with that he's gonna you know eventually just be like ah, i'm just gonna trash andy right now and make him look fucking super bad for being the guy who hired you who hires you who pays you I would just expect a little bit more respect, you know, like, a Andy, watch out, you know, yo, like, you you aren't even in the show anymore. You're you're just the back. Uh, I was like the the background noise to Warsky Live. And I would say a joke here and there, and everyone's just rolling their eyes like, oh my god, how did? Why are you saying a joke right now? Holy fuck! Can I slip in and feel comfortable? saying a joke because if you don't want me there then just let me know and you know good luck on your show have, have a fantastic mind 
uh, time. Andy's tolerance for being berated, ignored, and devalued constantly finally came to an end. Well, so too did his professional and personal relationship with J.F. Gariepi. And without Gariepi, there could be no Worski live. In a demonstration of poetic irony, the duo separated flatly, uneventfully, and with little fanfare, a result juxtaposed heavily by the controversial nature of the show they produced together. So another victim falls to the ever-consuming maw of blood sports, and Andy is forced to retreat from everything to recollect himself. For the first time in nearly two years, Andy takes time away from his channel, uploading nothing between the 26th of April and the 4th of May. Admittedly, this was a small amount of time, but for the Andy Worski channel, it was unprecedented. Worski returns with a familiar face in tow. Chris makes his grand comeback on Worski Live, the two longtime friends and co-hosts filming an introduction for the show. Except that the stream inevitably reverts to what it had been for the last few months, which were conversations around immigration, race, white identity, and the alt-right. Towards the end of the stream, Andy becomes becomes visibly frustrated with Chris as he finds himself repeating the ideas that had dominated his life when his ex-co-host, JF, worked tirelessly to court an alt-right audience. So let's say I'm that not, happens. I'm, so let's say that happens, though. My viewpoint is not fully alt-right. I want to just lower the amount of immigration. That's right. So, so theoretically, let's say someone came in and did that. I would want that, too. I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone came in and did that. Is that not something you would vote for immediately? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, that would slow the rate down. But the way people's minds are working right now, the majority mm -hmm. isn't to that. So people right, talking about... Right, right now. Yeah, and that's a problem because it's accelerating. It's exponential. That's, that's right. So people are still... It won't slow down. You can slow things, slow down. Things change. Yeah, but only if you do something about it. And that's you it's right. On your ass, that's why people are talking. That's right. So what is, what's your point? People are talking. The days of off the cuff, unscripted, unabashedly honest anti left mockery between two friends had come and gone. All was not yet lost for Andy's channel, however. He would make one final attempt to keep the fire of internet blood sports burning by hosting the morning kumite on his own channel, moving it out of its popular morning time slot. To date, only one episode of the kumite remains on Andy's channel from the 18th of May 2018, in which an obese man slathers his body with mayonnaise. Presumably, the kumite existed on Andy Worski's channel between the 5th of May, or sometime closely following Chris's return, and the 23rd of May, the kumite's official cancellation. The following evening, the 24th of May, Andy Worski would host a live stream titled Fallout, Call-Ins, which boasts an astronomical runtime of 7 hours and 50 minutes. Unlike many of his more successful live streams with JF at the helm of the channel, the stream only garnered about 37,000 views. At the onset of the stream, Andy briefly explains why the Kumite was cancelled despite it being a pillar of the internet blood sports community. But what would follow would be a final falling out between former friends and quintessential members of the internet blood sports community. Andy Worski and Tonkasaw would shred their relationship in front of their audiences over whether or not Tonkasaw advised Andy to publicly fire JF only a month prior. Uh, yesterday, we did the, the final Kumite. As you all know, uh, it was sad. You know, we we just we all felt as if it wasn't working out. You all saw what happened yesterday. Uh, that's the thing, basically, right? Uh, and then I would have liked it to go a better way, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, hundred percent. It happened, Andy. Yes, and that's, that's why. And that's down. why in the fucking morning you were like, "Why would he disrespect his boss? You should definitely fire him. Do it on the no, air. You, and no, this is how no, you should do it." You and then you're already Rattor, firing him. And then, I couldn't tell uh, you uh, any more. And then Andy, Rattor, you Rattor, fire him. Uh, after you'd already boss. decided it. Yeah, no, I told you when you, you get in there, you, layered. Yeah. Okay, but on Ralph Retort, the whole lie that you said on Ralph Retort is that oh, I, I, I. What Andy did uh, on air was stupid. You were the one who said you should fucking embarrass him you know on I, air. No, no, and I you came up with all these lies. Yes, yes, yes you did, motherfucker. Go in there you're and put your dick down if you're doing it. You believe you your own lies. What the fuck happened, Then you Andy. gave the wrong That's advice, you stupid fuck fucking happened, dummy. Andy. You're a fucking liar. You That's gave, a fucking lie. You're a fucking lie. Gabe, all right, no, failure. you're a fucking lie. Yeah, you're a fucking liar. You lie about everything. You're a fucking snake, Tonka. You're a fucking snake. 
disgusting. You fuck you. You fuck do. You. You're, you're a piece disgusting. of shit. Tonka, I honestly hope you Blind. fucking just go if and do buy your own thing. I don't give a shit. A... You're a piece of garbage. If Everyone you sees this, it. You're, you're a little shit. snake. Presumably, Andy Worski felt as though his co host from the Kumite, particularly Tonka Saw, had manipulated him into firing his ex co host, Gary Epi, in order to undermine his career. Andy absolutely suffered massive subscriber losses and monetary losses after his public splitting from Gary Epi, but this line of attack reveals that Worski held Tonkasaw somewhat accountable for this undesirable turn of events. The only certainty was that the Kumite, which had been a powerhouse of viewership throughout the rise of internet blood sports, was over. The entire catalog of the morning Kumite, which was on Tonkasaw's channel, would be deleted later that year, the 5th of November. You can see a substantial and sudden drop in total channel views from over 2 million to just over 600,000. Very little evidence that the Kumite ever happened exists on the internet any longer, save for some archived footage and the single remaining episode still on Andy Worski's channel. So a brief summary of the story so far. In order for the genre of internet blood sports to flourish, Andy Worski upended the anti-liberal community that he had been an integral part of, severing ties with close friends and nearly anyone still associated with the skeptics, the politically interested YouTubers who had been replaced by Andy and his blood sports ilk. Within half a year, blood sports would crumble as well. Baked Alaska was ruined, JF's relationship with Andy was ruined, the Kumite was ruined, it was all over. Andy would attempt to salvage his live streaming career by inviting a new co-host to take the place of JF Gariepi, a man by the name of Jay Dyer. Jay is of very little importance to the story, but what is important to note is his temperament. A calm, thoughtful, debate-oriented thinker. Andy's presumption of his success was that he needed a cerebral person to act as his foil on Worski Live. In an effort to reignite the flame of his former glory, he invited Jay to be his new foil Oil, but this relationship would end briefly after it began with little to note. It simply didn't work out. This chapter of Andy Worski's live streaming career was about to come to a close, but not to a permanent end. He would attempt to retain his viewers, who were accustomed to conflict and controversy on his channel, by making several live streams openly attacking his ex-co-host JF Gariepi, followed by one more responding to his other ex-co-host Tonkasaw, but none of these streams garnered any significant attention. Still, the spirit of blood sports graced Andy with the happiest period of his online career, which meant that he was not about to let the genre fade completely into obscurity. On the night of July 13th, 2018, Andy Worski streamed a viewing of his independently produced movie from 2012, Dark Fist, which you'll remember from the beginning of this story. Then, nothing. A full month would pass until Andy would upload again, marking his longest absence from his channel since his viral explosion in the fall of 2016. This story's final chapter continues on the 14th of August, 2018, when Andy Worski uploaded a brief and strange video titled, See You Soon. On the 17th of August, episode 1 of Worski Went Crazy premiered with a positive reception from viewers, few of them as there were. It was a return to form for the Worskis, as Chris and Andy shared the screen together for a written, edited, and produced project not too dissimilar from their early skit comedy videos. This particular video, however, was more of a meta-analysis of the self for Andy, leaning into his deteriorating mental condition and alleged cocaine usage. He would follow up with a second episode before unceremoniously abandoning the project. A video titled How to Manscape Lorsky episode 1 would follow, but this new series would not receive a follow-up episode either. The upload between episodes 1 and 2 of Worski Went Crazy would be a stark shift in subject matter for Andy Worski. Video Game Media An intriguing detail in the video's description is a writing credit to one Ian Miles Chong, a journalist who had appeared on Andy Worski's channel on at least two occasions, May 18th and July 5th, 2017. Andy's first foray into games media would premiere on the 22nd of August, 2018. On the 27th of September, just over a month later, Andy would lend his voice to a channel called Hype Break, covering a Fortnite controversy. Fortnite Season 6 is here and there's a lot of stuff they've added. Tons of cosmetics, shadow stones, backpack pets, and uh, <clears throat> boob physics. <laughs> Hypebreak was a joint business venture between Ian Miles Chong and Andy Worski, and for a time, things seemed incredibly promising for the budding channel. Although not a regular occurrence, 
Enough videos garnered hundreds of thousands of views, making the pursuit well worth the effort. Thus, the two continued their fruitful business partnership. For the weeks that followed his return to regularly written and edited videos over long-form live streams, and he would cover gaming news and make more traditional anti-feminist content. Save for one video, his channel would not manage to break more than 10,000 views on any given upload during this period of time. So he returned to what he knew best. On September 30th, only days after starting on a hype break, Andy would produce yet another response video to his old nemesis Francesca Ramsey, digging up a months old video as a source. Only days after that, on the 4th of October, Andy would return yet again to his long form livestream format, covering whatever the current controversy was coursing through the internet on that day. Three days later, the 7th of October, he would begin what he would later call his war path, scorching the earth between him and anyone who who may have once been a friend and is no longer, treading old ground and revisiting old enemies for content. The spirit of blood sports would live on at the insistence of Andy Borsky. His first target was former friend Blair White, who he called in his videos titled The Fakest of the Fakes. The stream, although negatively received, garnered nearly 65,000 views. Not the kind of viewership that Andy once had when he shared his channel with JF, but a substantial improvement from recent months. Jeff Holliday, another former friend and associate, would be next. And for the guys of, of you out there who do that and put in all that good work, kudos to you. It's badass. Um, I, I. No, no, it's badass if you live in 2002 and you're and you're a retard. <laughs> I, how, how do you get through all of the fucking inspirational quotes and kitty pictures and and shit on Facebook to actually find this? That, that's what I want to know. <laughs> The second voice you hear in that clip belongs to a gentleman who calls himself Geek Thulu. At this point in the story, he would become a permanent fixture on Andy's channel, positioning himself as the fourth co-host replacement following Chris, JF Gariapi, and Jay Dyer. Crowd and T, the ex-confidant of Worski's who he called upon to attack Rage After Storm and Failure in Tonkasaw, the two ex-co-hosts and friends from the Morning Kumite, would be next, with Andy dedicating over 20 hours of airtime to the three of them, in between October 20th and October 25th, 2018. Over the course of the next few months, this conflict would boil over into the real world, with Andy Worski challenging Takasaw, an alleged UFC fighter, to a real fight. Mm, tough guy, Tonka. Challenges me to a fight. Challenges everyone to a fight, right? No one wants to fight you, so you're you're the winner. You're the 106 and 0. Because <laughs> no one wants to fight you. Right? But you expected that because you're all tough online and a lot of people have shit to do. They're busy. Now, why did I accept? Why did I accept the fight? Because you've, you've crossed the line. The bout was set to take place in the new year, mid-January of 2019, giving the feuding YouTubers time to work through the logistics. In a stroke of fortune for Andy, Tara La Rosa, a professional mixed martial artist, facilitated the event, streamlining the process of booking a venue and taking the proper channels for a public fight, but Tonkasaw made it his mission not to show up for the fight, forfeiting to Andy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not have heard that we were supposed to have a YouTube grudge match tonight. His opponent did not show up. I'm going to hand the mic over to him and let him discuss his feelings. This guy, Tom Kassar, has has challenged about 50 people online to fight. It's saying he was a UFC champ, MMA, and he, I was the first person to be like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. And he's tried everything in his power to make this match not happen. Low T Tonka! Internet blood sports had made it into the real world, giving Andy this taste of victory he hadn't known since his monumental stream with Richard Spencer. Tonka Saw was well and truly done. His last morning stream, hosted on Tonka Radio, boasts a measly 605 views with an unforgiving like to dislike ratio. Still, Andy's victory would be soured quickly as nefarious things brewed between himself and his business partner, Ian Miles Chong. But I mean, I never would trust Ian Miles Chong to do anything. I mean, he's a snake. He's been a snake. Well, he way. apparently is trying to take the channel right now. He's fucking texting me. Oh, what are you texting me? Oh, he's trying to take it. I'm sure he's watching right now. Yeah. Hey, Andy, give me a call. It's concerning hype break. 
Oh god. So Ian probably trying to detach their fucking network or MCM from it without having the official okay. Which guess what, Ian, you fucking retard? That's illegal, and guess who gets fucked? There was a dispute between the two YouTubers over ownership of the channel and money allegedly owed to Andy Worski. Andy produced six videos pertaining to the ongoing matter between himself and his former business partner from January 26th to February 8th, 2019. In a video posted on Twitter, Andy describes his dire financial state, claiming that the money he should have been paid for his work on Hypebreak would have been his only source of income as he hadn't made any money from his primary channel and he had sunk a great deal of his own personal finances into the fight with Tonkasaw. Hey everyone, uh, I'm sure you've seen my tweet. So I was finishing up the editing for episode two of the Ian Miles Chung thing. Cause I finally got my internet working again after the DDoS attack and uh, you know, the money that was from December, because the MCM pays every two months, was all from hype break, because obviously I didn't do any war pass in December. I think I just did one or something. Uh, the MCM said I would get the money from December and January um, from hype break, since it was still under my name. But I guess my MCM is fucking retarded, and... When Ian hacked the account and stole it from me, he changed the AdSense account, and I guess um, they sent it to the hype, uh, hype break at gmail, the hype break at gmail.com, which uh, is connected to obviously Ian Miles Chung's um, AdSense, meaning the four to five thousand um, dollars that the channel would make that I was, that I needed because I got no more money from not working for four months to for three months, plus from the fucking fight, the Valor fight that didn't pay me even though I made them thousands of dollars and promotion, um, paying people and everything. That check was supposed to be the check that put me right, you know, to keep me afloat until the next thing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Although he wasn't a co-host, Ian Miles Chong would join the growing number of business partners, friends, and associates who Andy Worski would violently eject from his life. Soon after, Andy Worski would make a public statement disavowing Geek Thulu on Twitter. Geek had operated as Andy Worski's streaming co-host for a few months, but this particular individual is so unimportant to the story that I won't waste too much of your time on him. For those of you who are somewhat curious, here is a video of the kind of content that Geek Thulu and Andy Worski produced during their time together. This is what a nigger looks like. Like, you know, there are black people, and then there are niggers. This is a definition of a nigger in the making. Holy shit! <laughs> you what? Him, you called him a chimp? And I really definitely yeah. of a nigger in the making? Yeah. Yes. Everyone, 1488. 1488, spam chat. Or, it takes the black like, woman to be like, oh, let me get this motherfucking nigger. Well, yeah, because here. you know if a white... You, you know if a white fucking person actually fucking dragged this dumb little black ass off of there, all the fucking black people at Chuck E. Cheese would chip the fuck out and start fucking rioting. On February 18th, 2019, Andy would make this post on Twitter saying, Leave me alone, geek. We're done. Andy would then make two more videos about his ex-co-host, J.F. Gariepi, before deciding to leave Canada altogether for the greener pastures of Richmond, Virginia, where he would connect with a fellow Bloodsports livestreamer, Ethan Ralph, of the Killstream. I'm about oh, half dead from driving all day, but I have one more mission left to do. I'm headed to Nashville to collect Andy Worski, and as he mentioned, we're going to stream our, uh, our first meeting and our trip back to Nashville. From Nash, from Nash to Knox, the journey to beat a cripple, something like that, whatever. Uh, check it out, about three hours. I'm on my way right now, very well. He would commit to becoming an IRL streamer as his next business venture, enabling text-to-speech functionality and connecting it to speakers so that viewers can donate and broadcast anything to Andy's immediate vicinity. Here is Andy inside of a McDonald's being confronted by an employee for his audience's racist remarks. It's $5 on Steam Lab. Are you last screen about slavery? No, I'm not. 
Are you sure? I swear to God, I'm just talking shit. He's a hater. He's a hater. He's a hater. He's, a hater. He's trying to screw with me. He's been following me. I swear to God, why would I do that? That's not stupid. Yeah. It's someone who hates me who's trying to screw with me. Are you serious, guys? Why would you do that? Andy would leave this one-star review of the restaurant, claiming that he had been dangerously targeted for his skin color. That was March 6th, 2019. Ethan Ralph and Andy Worski were planning on live streaming a road trip between Richmond, Virginia and Miami, Florida, but they needed funding in order to provide their fans an entertaining show. They created an Indiegogo page with a goal of $4,000 of funding in order to finance this road trip. They met their goal with the intention to meet and greet with fans along the way. But as as usual, there was only misfortune on the horizon for Andy Worski. On the night of the 14th of March 2019, Ethan and Andy would engage in some kind of an altercation, although no footage of the alleged fight exists. In this clip, an agitated Andy Worski can be heard threatening Ethan Ralph and breathing heavily as he flees the hotel that they were sharing. Andy, breathe. No. Breathe. No, just come out me. Outside of the hotel, Andy shouts and berates Ralph, swearing intensely about his former friend's intoxication. After no, you're drunk. Get the fuck out of here. Holy fuck. Get him away from me. What the fuck's wrong with him? Fucking crackhead. He's a fucking insane person. Like, leave me the fuck alone. I'm gonna punch him in the fucking face. Fucking cocksucker. Okay, I'm leaving. No, I'm not staying. I'm not staying. I'm out. Fucking, let's fucking find a fucking train. Get the fuck out of here. Is he fucking stupid? He went back upstairs and drank the fucking bottle and back it down there. Come on, come talk to me. Come talk to me. Fuck out of my life, you fucking faggot. Holy fuck. I can't even have one minute alone. Later, Andy explains why the altercation took place as he streams inside of a nondescript restaurant, but that detail isn't important. What's important is that Ralph, like absolutely everyone before him, would join the ever-expanding circle of friends turned enemies in only a matter of days. March turned to April, and Andy can be seen exploring Miami, Florida with Alex, a fan of Andy's who tags along for the ride, and Failure, former friend turned enemy turned friend. Although his viewership is low, Worski genuinely seems to be enjoying his adventures through America, but his vacation would turn into a nightmare on the night of April 14th, 2018. The three streamers engage in a hostile interaction with three men walking the streets. What would transpire between them would lead to Andy's mimetic legacy, the words that he will be remembered by more than any others. Aim, aim, aim. <laughs> Stay back, stay back, stay back. Stay back, stay back, stay back, stay the fuck back, stay back, stay the fuck back. Walk away now. Stay back, stay back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get back, get back, get back. Get the fuck back! He was assaulted! Get the fuck back! We hate Nick. Get the fuck back! Aim, 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 aim! Calling the cops now! Aim! Alex would face three charges of aggravated assault and one charge of simple assault. The adventure was over. It was time to go home. The next day, April 15th, Andy would upload a video and a new series announcement titled Worski, My Own Worst Enemy. Part Zero, in which a defeated Andy Worski, fully aware of his deteriorating mental health and his dwindling circle of friends, would make an emotional vow to reflect on his life by telling his own story. This too would lead nowhere. Worski would never follow up on this commitment. Like the American road trip with Ethan Ralph, like the war path, like Lorski, like Worski went crazy, like his real life streams, he would never follow up on any of it. He would never give himself the chance. This story ends with a whimper. On the 26th of April, 2018, Andy Worski laid his mental illness bare for his viewers to see. He announced that he would be seeing a therapist in order to address his ADHD and severe panic attacks. Yeah, you don't live with... I'm gonna talk to a psychiatrist and let you all know what's up. 
What if that psychiatrist just says it's all in your head? But it's not. It's ADHD. And it's very difficult. And the mental pain and stress, which I'm going to go over right now, needs to, it needs to be fixed. Okay? I need to be feeling good. So, essentially, there was, uh, I had five, yeah, that's right, count it, five mental breakdowns before I left for America. Five. The ratings on this live stream are overwhelmingly negative, but at this point in time, this is par for the course. On the 10th of May, two weeks after the previous live stream, Andy posts on Twitter that he finally received his mental assessment and that he was looking forward to being on the road to recovery. As you all well know by now, the story of Andy Worski is a cycle of hope being crushed by bitter defeat. On the 24th of May, 2019, only two weeks after his optimistic post about turning his life around, Andy uploads a video. The newest video on Andy's channel as of recording this audio. Hey everyone, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard, but I've been hacked on a few different accounts. And uh, there's a lot of speculation, rumors, uh, and confusion about this whole situation. While I have some suspicions about who may have done it, I'm not an investigator, a cop, or a judge, so I'm gonna keep that to myself. Uh, I'm taking this very seriously, and I will not be responding anymore to anyone about this matter. And I will be also taking time off the internet to work on myself, okay? Peace. Then, nothing. I don't believe we've seen the end of Andy Worski. He will be compelled to return to the internet in order to reestablish himself as a professional content creator because he has to. What else can he do? Worski's reputation will be inexorably tied to white nationalism and the alt-right for the foreseeable future. He will be remembered as a paranoid provocateur who destroyed every friendship he'd ever built in the pursuit of money and validation. He will be defined by every heinous thing he's ever said and done, most of which has been immortalized on the internet. Who would be willing to employ a man in his state? How can a man like Andy Worski, who gave everything to be a YouTuber, ever let it go? We'll have to see as this story continues to unfold. For now, my name is Emmett Smith, I think I'm real, and I hope you enjoyed this installment of Internet Explorer. Thanks for listening. And that's it. That is a wrap. I never want to hear Andy Worski's name ever again in my life. But what an incredible and weird and absurd and very embarrassing story that was. And so unique to our time period, too. Only in the 21st century could you watch a man lose his shit on camera for views and super chats. Andy Worski is truly a first world nutcase and I am so glad to be done with it. Thank you for going on this journey with me. I am ready to move on to whatever the hell else I want to do. If you enjoyed the last two episodes of Internet Explorer and you'd like to watch a little bit more, I've got one more video. Uh, John Chow, a missionary killed on a remote island 600 miles off the coast of India. Really good video. I'm really proud of it. So go watch that one. Subscribe if you aren't already. Hit the bell so that you know when I upload because that can be a little sporadic. And enjoy all the good Internet Explorer content that you've got coming your way. If you like the video and you think you kind of liked me, Twitter and Instagram links are in the description. Go down there, give me a follow, and say hello. Thanks again, guys. This has been a hell of a journey. I don't think I'm ever going to do anything like this again. Until the next video of a more reasonable length, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.